Welcome to Watkins Glen International, one of the most famous racetracks in North America. It is time for the second race weekend of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. Mid-Ohio races one and two provided some incredible racing. But here at Watkins Glen, things get ramped up just to the next level. This has some of the most famous twisting corners anywhere in motorsports. And the straights, well, they provide great overtaking opportunities. The crazy thing about the Hurricane is pretty much unrestricted. And the top speeds will be the fastest of all the GT cars this weekend. The fans are ready. The drivers are ready to go. Let's watch some racing. All set up and ready to go for some loud and larry racing with Lamborghini Super Trofeo here at Watkins Glen International. They've been racing around these parts, well, since the 1950s. It was on the public roads in those days, deemed too dangerous. But they decided that they didn't want to let the motor racing disappear. And that's when Watkins Glen International was conceived to have the same kind of atmosphere and character as the public roads, but to be a closed road circuit. Hello everybody, I'm John Hindor from IMSA Radio and joining me in the booth today, my usual partner in crime, Jeremy Shaw, and we've also got special guest, IMSA WeatherTech sports car driver, who is indeed a Lamborghini driver, Brian Sellers, along with us. The Finger Lakes region of upstate New York, well known by tourists and motor racing aficionados alike. And this Watkins Glen International Circuit is almost three and a half miles of pretty close to motorsport perfection. Up, down, left, right, fast and slow corners, it has a bit of everything. And down through the years, Formula One, NASCAR and sports cars have all been here to take its challenge. Cars are on the pit lane and we're waiting to hear that glorious noise from the assembled Lamborghini V10 engines and then they'll be rolling out behind the safety car for a couple of formation laps. All the cars are identical. The class structure here depends on the driver speed and experience and those classes, you can see them reflected and the different colours on the top of the windscreen. Already had a race yesterday, it was a good start by the 71 black and green car from Loris Spinelli. He got away, a bit of fighting going on behind him, but ultimately at the chequered flag, it was the number 50 Proto and Piscopo who came through to win Pro-Am LB Cup, making it a very good day for the Proto family. That was Mark Proto in the number 88. And Spinelli, along with teammate JC Perez, the number 71 car, won overall. Brian Sellers joining us in the booth this weekend. His WeatherTech teammate, Madison Snow, is driving out there. Let's have a look at the track with Brian. As we approach turn one, we're going to shift up into sixth gear, brake at the 200 marker down to third, trying to get late on the brake, spin the car in early to the apex and looking for an early full throttle out of turn one. This is extremely important as we approach the high speed S's. We'll go up to sixth gear, full throttle all the way through the S's. This is a long straightaway, so our exit shot is key. As we head down to the bus stop, this is a great passing zone during the race, but also very important for lap time throughout qualifying. We'll go down to third gear, braking around the 400 marker, carrying as much speed as we can into the entry of the bus stop, getting it slowed in the middle, and then working to full throttle for the exit into the outer loop. A small lift into fourth gear, trying to keep the minimum speed high, rolling back to full throttle as we approach the laces of the boot. Looking for a small drainage pipe on the right-hand side to brake down to third gear, nice early turn in to catch the banking, rolling back to full throttle on the exit and up to fifth gear before we get to the toe. The toe is one of the heaviest banked corners on the track, down to third gear, off the brake, rolling the speed in and trying to get to full throttle nice and early to catch the uphill on the exit. Up to fourth gear, up to fifth gear as we enter the heel of the boot, which is one of the heaviest brake zones on the track and also one of the slowest corners. Down to the 200 marker, down to third gear, trail braking a long way into the apex, 
over the exit curb and up to turn eight, which is a second gear corner, climbing up over the rise, letting the front settle back down. And once we get it to turn, back to full throttle for turn 10. Turn 10 is fifth gear, just a lift, keeping your minimum speed up once again before we head to turn 11 onto the front straightaway, down to fourth. Lots of minimum speed, looking for an early full throttle all the way over the curve on the exit, out to the wall, and the approach to start finish. Thank you, Brian. Fabulous insight. Brian will be staying with Jeremy and me, John Hindorf, through the whole of the 55 0 minute race. We're starting to pack up behind the white Huracan safety car. That means it's time to go racing. The green flag at Watkins Glen is next. Could not wish for any better weather conditions here at Watkins Glen International. Let's take a look at how they line up for our second race of the weekend. Former champion Shinya Mishimi on the pole with Jonathan Chicotto alongside him. JC Perez and Brian Sellers, teammate from the WeatherTech Championship, Madison Snow. Further back down, Pitman Man on the inside of row five. Welcome back to the championship. And at the back, it's Bill Hubble and Martin Barkey on row eight. What a great sight and sound these cars make in the early morning sunshine, mid-morning sunshine here at Watkins Glen. 50, five zero minutes on the clock. Mishimi is bringing them down at a decent pace and wait for the green, there it is. And with one, two, three Huracans wide down the outside. The white car looking for a way around. It's three into one, three into turn one. Round the outside, Madison Snow's having a little look. Can he make it happen? Oh, gets a little hip check there. These are wide cars, and that's not wide enough for three Huracans together. Extraordinary stuff on cold tyres early on. Through goes the number one. Jonathan Giacomo goes through, and Madison Snow goes through into second. A brilliant start by Oliver, but I think there's a puncture. I think there's a puncture for one of the cars that was involved there. It's slowing down. That's the pulse of the Shinya Machimi. Yeah, I think that was a little rub. Might be a puncture on that car. Fantastic start by your WeatherTech teammate there. That was really, really brave driving from all of the three drivers concerned. Brian Sellers. Uh, that's pretty impressive for the opening lap three wide through the S's. I know in these cars it's not easy flat through there and it takes a lot of commitment, but you have to commend those guys for being pretty heads up, all charging hard, but being aware of the cars around them. How much grip do you have or not have early on because this is a bit of a voyage of discovery from all of them and, and Madison put himself really in the place you don't want to be on the outside. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. None of them have been in that position where you enter the S's this way. So you have to stay committed and you see the contact right here no. between the two cars. Uh, I was earlier, sorry, in turn one, you saw the tire puff uh, between the two. I'm not so sure you would. It looked to me that as you turned into turn right two rear. there, yeah, the left rear, I thought it was on number four. It was right here between well, the I, two. Is, is there contact? Let's have a look. You see a, a little rub yeah, there. Just a little rub. The inside. Watch as it, watch as it turns into turn two. Car got a bit screwed the left there. Rear. Left, left rear. rear. Yeah. Oh yeah. He definitely yeah. had a problem. You could see he yeah. had big oversteer in turn two as they were going uh, three wide. That's so it happened about early. That. Yeah. Oh, Oops. Big oh. crash. Uh oh. This is the number ten car. William Hubble. Uh, he's not had a great weekend, Mr. Hubble. And that is a full course yellow call by. Race control, and he's going to pull right into the path of somebody coming round behind him, one of the later that's cars. Mishimi. And that's Mishimi who's been in the pits. It's turn 10, yeah, very high speed corner. Uh, Hubble's not going to get that back to the pit lane. Uh, Mishimi uh, will dive into the pits. Now, did Mishimi get in before the pits were closed? He'll need a new tyre and wheel combination. Hubble just loses it coming through 10. He pinched it on the exit at 10 and goes in. Drivers left. Yeah, we've seen that so often with inexperienced drivers do that, haven't we, Brian? Yeah, it's very difficult. It's so easy to sit up here and think you should just open your hands and use all the road on the exit. But 
you know, as a driver, you always think you have a little bit left to save it. And for sure, he was trying his best not to exceed track limits. And, and what he's also trying to do there, Brian, is get back to the left-hand side of the road to set himself up for that very important final corner, which takes you down onto the start-finish line. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, and it's a short amount of time between 10 and 11. You yeah. really have to hustle the cars from, from driver's right to driver's left. And the combination of all those things, you know, he's probably up on the curb with cold tires, didn't have enough grip to transition the car and just caught him out a little bit. That's right. It's just the second weekend uh, in, in this series, and you, you didn't even do the first round at Mid-Ohio this season. You did a one weekend last year, William Hubble. Uh, he's used to high horsepower cars. Mm. Uh, one of, he's got various uh, vintage cars that he, that he uh, uh, drives uh, at various events around the country, including an Action Express Racing DP... Uh, DP Delara, which yeah. uh, I think is actually one of the cars that's won here in the sailing six hours of before. You Lost that very early in the yeah, piece there, Yeah, you can right. just see that's, that, that looks to be just a cold tire issue. Yeah. I think not having the grip up all the way. And he, it started to oversteer on him before the apex. And it's a fast corner. So if you ask a little bit too much, it can catch you out really quickly. And it's a, you know, it's a shame to see something like that this early in the race. Brian Sellers alongside Jeremy Shaw and John Hindhoff and a big foot goes on, big right foot goes on to the throttle. Green flag across the line in front of us, down towards turn one, a good jump from Jonathan Chicotto. Madison Snow not able to challenge and a big gap between those two drivers and JC Perez with Taylor Proto right in behind. Then Damian Oki leading the arm category, by the way. Didn't get a chance to run through that before we went into full course yellow with that incident for William Hubble in the number 10 car but a very good restart Jeremy for Jonathan Chicotto it absolutely was he got on the on the throttle very early there but uh, he's still got uh, Madison Snow right behind him as they go through the inner loop this next on this uh, fifth lap of the race beautiful run through the S's from Madison Snow and that's allowed him to take more uh, top speed, Brian Sellers, into the braking area for the uh, inner loop. I think you can see a little bit of difference in team management right now in terms of car setup. And I think when you look, uh, Jonathan can stretch a little bit once you get into the tight, twisty stuff of the track. But it looks like the change racing car maybe runs a little bit less downforce than that car. They are able to pull back on the straightaways a little bit. So maybe you'll see the change car strong exiting turn one through the bus stop, give up a little bit in the middle, and you know just a different in, in technique, I suppose, from the programs. Yeah, just a little visual there. It does look to me like that change racing car is carrying significantly less rear wing, isn't it? Less rear wing angle on that car than the race leader number one. It's a spec series, although we have four different categories of drivers, the cars are all the same. There are some detailed changes that you can do, and the rear wing angle is one of them, but effectively, it's all about the nut behind the wheel, and that's why the single manufacturer series are so popular. And hearing about a penalty from the original start, and I think this is going to go against Madison Snow, I'm afraid, Brian, from the original start. I'll wait to see that confirmed on one of our screens. He certainly made a, a good jump on the side. It was a pretty slow initial start, and he was kind of make, trying to make a jump from the second row of the grid on the outside. Yeah, got through three wide through turn one in a very exciting manoeuvre. Let's wait to see that confirmed. But at the moment, second place for Madison Snow, that could change. You can see the cars come through the bus stop. This is one right. of the, the greatest shots in motorsports when you see them come through from 175 miles per hour, jumping the curves, how much curve they use, how high the car gets in the air. For me, it's one of the best parts of this track. And off the cars are completely off the ground, aren't they? Coming through that middle part of the, of the inner loop there. And it is as violent in the car as it looks from the outside. And, it, and it, it, it's hot here today. I mean, for your race uh, tomorrow, it's going to be a workout. It is going to be a workout. One of the things that, that people don't understand is how much the heat influences the drivers inside the car. And so if our ambient is approaching 90 degrees inside the car, you'll see temperatures of 120 plus, which the drivers definitely feel that physical fatigue. It's Brian Sellers, the man who knows Lamborghinis very well and knows the driver. 
of the 29 car. Madison Snow very well there. Our championship leaders in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship, the feature race of this Sirland's six hour at the Glen weekend. Right now, Madison plying his trade in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series, which is being led by Jonathan Chicotto. Snow just eight tenths of a second behind across the line. Those two pulling away from the rest of the field, which is led by JC Perez. It's pretty interesting for me when you watch the difference between the two cars. You can see Jonathan Chicotto's car on the entry to turn one much more stable than, say, the change racing car at the moment. You can see Madison Snow is bending the car into the corner a little bit more progressively, trying not to put too much weight on the front because I think it's probably pretty oversteery compared to that car of uh, Chicago, who it appears right now is maybe just maintaining pace to, to give something over to his co-driver. Yeah, that's certainly a factor during these races, a 50 minute race in, in total. And uh, the second half of the races, particularly for the pro and pro-am classes for this year, mandatory, you run two drivers per car. So for the second guy taking over for the second stint, you know, he's got to kind of bed himself in right away. Whereas the single driver cars, the guy, drive, guy going out of the pits, he knows already how that car is, is handling and how the tires are working and, and how the tr what the, the track conditions are like. And it, it, that's difficult. I mean, no matter how good you are or how what level of professionalism you have, you don't know what the car is doing. So for the first lap, at least a guy that's already in it and has the feeling has some sort of advantage. And it may only be for a lap or a lap and a half, but there is something to it without a doubt. Just over half an hour to go. One more lap, I think, Jeremy. Uh, maybe two for the leaders before the pit lane window for the pit stop opens that's right one minute 48.2 is the, the, the fastest lap last round a little bit quicker this time but still 148.2 uh, our race leader said in the fastest lap of the race those first two pulling away a little bit from the third and fourth place cars and interesting, I think when, when we sit and watch the timing scoring a little bit, you can see the lap times between the lead two cars um, are pretty similar, just a couple tenths, but the speed trap difference between them is pretty substantial. You see the lead car of Chicago has one of the slower top end speeds, but continues to set fast sectors uh, through the tight, twisty, heavy braking uh, corners. And, and oh. coming through the S's, you know, that allows him to get a, a big enough margin ahead of the uh, number, number 29 car that might be faster on the straight, but he's got too much to make up before he gets to the inner loop. Yep, that's exactly right. It's it's a game of give and take. Which one do you want to have? And Watkins Glen is a place that you can do both. You can go for the lap time by low drag, or you can go uh, for the lap time with high downforce. And that has to be a collaborative decision here, particularly for the the teams that are fielding two drivers because it's no point at all having a car that one driver feels very comfortable in it and the other one just can't drive lamborghini super trofeo north america on cbs sports network is being brought to you by TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979 and by motor trend on demand visit motortrendondemand.com start your free trial today This time around, will Jonathan Chicotto come in or will he continue? Oh, it looks like the subcar's coming in, sir. He is in. And you can, Chicotto's in. you can see, I thought there was a chance that he would come in this lap. He was close to his best first sector, set purple in the second sector. So that's a good time for them to come. A good, a good in lap to make the stop. Now, Madison stayed out and has assumed the lead in the 29 car. Is that a kiss? Brian, of whatever the guys ahead of you do, do something different, or will this have been planned out? Well, I think it probably is a case of the opposite of what, what the car in front of you is doing. So now what they'll tell Madison is, give us one or two killer, killer laps, try and set the best sectors you can, and let's jump them in the pit lane because it is so difficult to pass. Uh, that's exactly right, Brian. You know, he, 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 he looked like he might be capable of going a little bit quicker than the, the race leader carnival one. So now he's got that clear track and he can take full advantage of it. At least that's the plan. 29 and 66 are going to get time penalties for not being an in alignment at the start of the race. Penalty has been confirmed. Uh, hasn't haven't seen that on the screens yet, but I'm I've had that confirmed in my ears and uh, 
by message. So that will be added to the times. 29 and 66 for not being in alignment. I believe that's going to be a time penalty. Uh, I'll try and find out. I thought I heard 15 seconds. That makes this lap even more important. Obviously, yeah. you want to try and get everything you can out of it. And he's he's blue in sector two. Madison is, and you can see he's really trying hard. I'd be surprised if they don't pit this lap and do their driver change now. Um, give Corey Lewis an opportunity to go and push. Yeah, jump start, 15 seconds post rate for 29 and 66. Confirmed. I have it now on the screen. So that's a huge penalty for the start of the race. Not I, for the restart, that was the original green flag. I think this is a difficult situation for the leader right now as well. If you notice, um, he came around on what was a what was his best lap of the race, but as he came around this time, they did not pit, and cars are coming out of the pits. So I believe he will have traffic on this lap, and that's not a good situation because uh, Jonathan uh, Cotto did not have any traffic on no. his end lap. Uh, Trent Hinman yeah. is having a good outlap as well with a clear track ahead of him in that number one car. Eduardo Piscopo has taken over the 5-0, the 50 car. And uh, Damien Oki. Oh, Damien Oki getting a pit violation for speeding. Plus nine miles an hour at pit exit. So that's a drive through for him. Uh, KPH, excuse me, I, I got that wrong yesterday, thank you, Shea. Martin Barkey is leading, but also a pit stop, so the top four cars have not yet pitted. Yeah, Martin Barkey in second place. He's done a great job, by the way, in this race. He started last because he didn't, didn't get a chance to go out at all in qualifying. Uh, hardly any laps in the drive this weekend uh, for Martin prior to yesterday's race. So it's been a really fine performance to get himself up into second place and turning some very competitive lap times as well. And to his credit, this is not an easy place to get in and go fast. So if he's able to come up to speed like he has in the race today, it is very impressive. Because he's also driving this weekend in the Intercontinental Tire Sports Car Challenge and his car will be started on the pole position by his co-driver, Brett Sandberg. So we are halfway through the pit window. And Madison Snow, Brian Sellers teammate from the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship brings the number 29 onto pit lane. Just in front of us, the white car then heads towards its pit stop and its driver change. Mandatory pit stop time here for two drivers. The idea is uh, so that nobody tries to break any world records in changing drivers. This is all about safety and also it means that you don't have to. Oh, didn't leave it in gear. Cars rolling down at incline there. They need to chalk that up. Otherwise, the team member who's checking the tyres is uh, going to find that very difficult. And that's always a problem here at Watkins yes, because it is. it is steady graded all the way down the, the pit lane. I remember that from when I raced here. I had a brake failure on the line and I brought it into the pits and there was no way to stop the car uh, at all. Literally, I had to sort of lean on the back of somebody else to, to stop the car in the pit lane. It's a problem. 66 in the pit lane as well. Looking for the leader now. Actually, we're looking for the number one car with Trent Hinman in it to see where it comes out. Uh, compared to Madison Snow and Corey Lewis in that 29 change car. Yeah, he was, he was uh, he last comes. time around he was about three seconds ahead the number one car ahead, uh, number one car ahead of number 71. Coming Oscar around Lally. the final corner yeah. now, and this is going to be a substantial lead. Oh, well, it's, the white car is rolling. And it is still be a big lead. It's going to be right. a big lead getting up to speed. Now the question will be, who comes through in second? Can Spinelli get through as well? It's a bit closer than I thought. And they're gonna be side by side and the white 29's got out ahead. But on cold tires, Corey Lewis will have to fight. Does he give up the inside? I say no, and he says no. He did slam the door there, but he eased it gently close to discourage the number one of Trent Hinman going through. Remember, the 29 car has got a 15-second time penalty to be applied at the end of the race. Leads the race at the moment, but will, of course, be adjusted back. But this is very important that he stays ahead as long as he can. Those are tense moments. My heart's beating fast when you watch that. You see Trent Hinman really trying to be aggressive there up through the S's with what looked like it was going to be a really strong, strong move. But great job by Corey to fight him off on, uh, on colder tires.
Yeah, he's going to protect the inside here. Is he going to the toe of the boot? Uh, Ooh, that, well, that was close. At, at this point, <laughs> somebody's got to get on the phone to Trent Hinman and say, Trent, he's 15 seconds behind you. There's no need to stick your nose in there and either damage the car or draw a penalty into the heel of the boot. And Corey Lewis, Corey Lewis is doing a really good job here. He's not slamming the door. He's going very gently into the apex of all the corners. This time, Hinman gets alongside, coming through turn number nine. It'll be side by side on the exit. Hinman just leaning on him a little bit and will get through. Ooh, that's a bit naughty, just juke back in front has taken the lead. Corey Lewis doing a good job there to hold off Hidman as long as he did. The problem now is Loris Spinelli yes. is right in behind him. Yes, having just set the fastest lap of the race, uh, King Carl number 71, last time around, looked at the uh, story. Now, is he any quicker now on this lap? It's not come up yet. No, not quite, but uh, he's lapping very, very quickly is Loris Spinelli, car number 71. In credit where credit is due, that was a great pass by Trent Hinman. That is not yeah. an easy portion of the track to get a pass done, and not somewhere that you would think is a classic passing zone. It's a short straightaway and just a really well executed move. He planned that a few corners ahead. And of course, he was your teammate at Petit Le Mans last year. So you've seen him in close quarters and, and, and interacted with him. He's, a, he's got his, his head screwed on. He's a pretty good, he's a very good driver. And uh, he's, he apparently gives good feedback. He's very good. He's very good. And I've known Trent for quite a long time, um, back to where he actually did Team USA. Um, was the first time that, that I came into contact with him and he was a little, I think, 15 or 16 year old kid. And, um, I bet he loves you reminding him of that. Well, let me tell you, he's not and little he and he's not too. a kid anymore. He's, he's uh, turned himself into a, a pretty strong young man. Battle for second place is on on the track with the 29 of Corey Lewis. Remember that car will be getting a 15 second penalty assessed. The other car that got one is the 66 LB Cup leader for being out of alignment at the start of the race. So effectively a jump start penalty assessed. 15 seconds going on to their race finishing times. But at the moment, Corey Lewis wants to try and hold on to that as much as he can and through goes Spinelli in an exact, pretty much an exact copycat manoeuvre that uh, lost the lead for Corey Lewis on the road. And you can see the difference between the cars, the change racing car really struggling to put the power down. And so you see that is the slowest corner on the track. They use second gear and the two cars now that have gone past Corey Lewis and the change car were able to put the power down, good traction out and be able to actually just make it look not so difficult driving up the inside. Inside 15 minutes to go, and this is where the drivers really earned the earned their money because they are going to try and wring every last bit of performance out of a car that has already been pushed throughout the race. Now, yes, we've had a bit of full course yellow, so the good news for these closing drivers, Brian, is that the Pirelli tyres will have a little more life in them than they might have ex expected. If we'd gone full green, they might have. Pirelli make great tyres, they run the whole 50 minutes on, on one set, but any tyre eventually starts to give up a little bit of performance and you have to uh, you have to modify your driving style. They might get a little bit, bit, little bit more performance here in the, in the last few minutes of the race. Yeah, that's right. You can see, uh, again, Spinelli pushing hard there, a little bit of a track limit warning for turn eight, but you're right. With the yellow flag in the beginning of the race, the lead drivers or the first drivers only got four or five time laps. So they handed the car over with a much more much more tire life than expected. So now these guys can use them a little bit more aggressively than probably what they anticipated. Yeah, as we see that with the two of the last three laps, Spinelli set the fastest lap race. He didn't that time around. He only reduced the deficit to the leader by a tenth for the second last time around. Car seven point six seconds for pit stop violation. Two nine is going to get a penalty as well. I missed that at thirty three has got one, so has 47, 71, 2.4 seconds, and 46, 2.7 seconds. So that's a whole raft of penalties. Now, I have got a screen that will show me that, so I should be able to give you that in just a moment. Uh, I was listening in on race control. As soon as they come up on the screen, I'll give you, I gave you the numbers there, but I will give you the numbers of seconds again. This won't show up on the timing and scoring 
to the left of the screen, but there will be assessed post race just like the jump start penalties were early were earlier on. But, uh, so that is going to change the race. Of course, the teams have heard the same radio message that I just have, and that means that they will be able to tell their drivers. I'm not sure what they can do about it at this point. Uh, it's not as if you can just magically find a few more seconds. No, and uh, Penel uh, the uh, penalty there for number 71 car, that's the car that's chasing Trent Hinman yeah. for the lead, so that's going to take them out of contention for the lead. Trent Hinman can stroke it home from here, uh, but nobody told him that because you just said you fastest lap of the race last time, around 146.8 for Trent Hinman, our race leader. This battle going on, uh, there's battles all the way up and down the field, actually. It's kind of fun. Uh, the battle certainly for AM classes continuing and uh, other battles further back between, who's that heading into turn one? That's, uh, that was uh, Damon Oakey just making a move there on the number 33 car of Cameron Castles. And one of the, the interesting things is you see right now the M class is not so far away from the pro guys, fifth and sixth. With these penalties issuing, it can move guys like Teens and Hardwick up, up in the standings. Okay, so car seven, 0.6 of a second, 2.9. 0.9 of a second. Car 3-3, three, three, 7.5 seconds. Car 4-7, 5.1, 7-1, 2.4, and car 46, 2.7 seconds. And okay. that is that is three times the amount of time that they were short on their pit stop time, Jeremy. Is right. that correct? That's exactly correct, yeah. That's why um, there's some odd times there. Yeah, it makes it awfully difficult to, to keep a track of things there, but what it certainly does mean is that the uh, number one car is, is looking good here out in front. Uh, the question then is uh, whether the number 50 car can overhaul the number 29. He's certainly getting a lot closer. Uh, the Eduardo Piscopo was a little bit quicker again on that lap than Corey Lewis. He's got that gap down now to 2.1 seconds. It was five seconds, uh, but with a point, with a number 29 car has a 0.9 second and penalty. 15 seconds. Oh, and 15, I forgot about From the, the start yeah, of the race. Yeah, of course he did. Plus, yeah, plus, so, plus so, so that's going to knock that car down. Now, my interest is, though, whether Eduardo Piscopo can get close enough to the Spinelli car to take second overall when all of the accounting is done at the end of this. Uh, we have Indeed. Price, Price Waterhouse Cooper will be in to uh, work this out for us at the end. Got the spreadsheet running. And this is a that's perfect... just bad teamwork, well, that, in fairness. This is a perfect example of where execution has to be key. I'm, you, you, you see these cars are running within tenths of a second every lap. The fastest laps between the two are, are less than half a tenth apart. So you can't afford to give up anything in a pit stop. The second race of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series, round four on the 2018 season, and it looks to be going the way of Trent Hinman in that number one car. He is bringing it home after a good first stint by his teammate. And meanwhile, the 0-9, Damien Oki recovering from a drive through for speeding, nine kilometers over the speed limit. And he is back now into fourth in arm, ninth overall. Have had incident for William Hubble in the number 10 car early on, pulled tires, spun the car coming out of turn 10 and if you're wondering why we haven't been necessarily mentioning the car that Shinji Mishimi uh, drives he's normally at the sharp end of the field that car had a puncture with side-by-side -side contact early on and uh, had to come back to the pit lane yeah and also last time around it had, had another problem coming down the pit straight very very slowly but I think it's now back up to speed again that was kind of weird not quite sure what happened there right good spot Jeremy Shaw into the last three minutes are what? A couple of laps for the leader. Corey Lewis has got Eduardo Piscopo now right behind him. Now those positions will swap because the penalties will be assessed on the white number 29, the Lamborghini Charlotte's supported car uh, after the race. But uh, Piscopo is not close enough to Spinelli to take away second place. And that penalty is certainly significant in championship standings because uh, that was the car that led coming into this weekend with two wins at Mid-Ohio, number 29 car for change racing. But uh, after yesterday's race with uh, Piscopo and, Ta and Taylor Predo in the car number 50 winning and Brandon Godova and Shinji Michimi finishing third, they're only both four points behind. They pass in the AM category. 
Ryan Hardwick doing it the hard way around the outside of turn four. Brian Thienis may be making a little mistake coming up through the S's because there was such a speed differential there, Brian. I think there might have been a little wiggle or wobble coming up the hill there for Brian Thienis. Uh, you'd have to think that was the situation because he's still, he's still running and still holding on to OK lap time. So maybe he charged a little bit hard into the S's, got out in the marbles a little bit and gave Ryan Hardwick the run through. It's a real rhythm section of the circuit there. If you get one bit wrong, particularly if it's early on, you're out for the hook section. Yeah, and it melts the lap time away. I mean, it melts it away. So you have to bear oh. in mind. Uh, debris, I think, uh, from the number one car. Sorry, Brian, to interrupt there, but this is our leader. It'll be white flag next time around. Now, something was on the track, or is there a right rear puncture on that car? I thought I could see the tyre moving around. No, I think it's OK. That would have been a scary moment for Trent Hinman, because I'll tell you now, a driver of his calibre, he'll have seen that debris being thrown up behind him through the... I mean, they're not very big side mirrors, uh, Brian Sellers, but he would have seen that. Seen it, felt it, heard it. Um, and then so you start asking questions. Uh, guys, I'm not sure. I heard something out of the right rear is everything okay but there's a good chance that he also saw that debris while he was on track as well and couldn't avoid it as you said back to the s's you get offline and you're in trouble so his options were hit it or avoid it and hit it was definitely the lesser of the two evils a little bit of drama there there'll have been a con collective intake of breath from the team on the pit wall for that number one prestige car it looks all right everything i don't think that came off that car i'm pretty certain as brian seller said that that was debris on the track for someone else whether it was a little bit of uh, rubber trim or something like that that's what it looked like there's a little rubber sort of bib underneath the front of the uh, underneath the front spoiler uh, white flag is out Spinelli closing in on Hindman three seconds at the line that time around yeah, only pulled a tenth of a second on in that lap despite the fact that uh, Trent Hindman's lap was about three quarters of a second slower than he had done on a previous lap and so now Trent really knows out. he has this race in hand yeah, he's and just, gonna, and bring he's it just gonna bring it home now at this stage he'll let the gap close down doesn't really care if it's one second or five seconds he's shown that today he is the guy to beat with fast lap after fast lap and so now he brings it home and uh, goes home with what will be a good points weekend for that car. Yes, absolutely right. Hardwick goes through, leading the AM category. Ryan Hardwick Spinelli will lead the pro AM category second overall for that duo as well. That's another good points haul for the 71 car as well. And in LB Cup, the 66 car, despite having a 15 second start penalty, uh, will win that category because Sheena Monk is the better part of a minute back yeah, down she's the already road. had a drive through hasn't Correct. she as well so yes, and absolutely. he's been fast at Bretton Merritt he's done a really good job for his first weekend in the car hats off also to Shea Holbrook by the way who's carrying on the good work done by Martin Barkey in the first uh, half part of the race Quite. and she's hanging on to the tail of Brian Thenis she's got a lot of experience as a driver as Shea Holbrook but she hasn't driven here in 10 years which is amazing to me 50 <laughs> minutes and counting the Clock has run down, the chequered flag is in hand, and round four of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series will go to the number one squad. Number one on the car, number one on the timing sheets, and top step of the podium. Trent Hinman brings it home, Spinelli brings home second place overall, and the win in the Pro-Am class for the 71 squad. Corey Lewis crosses the line in third, second in Pro for the car he shares with Madison Snow, but that is going to be overturned as Piscopo will get the jump after penalties applied for a jump start and a pit lane time penalty violation. So I think that will drop the 29 car down just to fourth position and third in class. Brian Sellers, a yeah. thought about the, uh, the number one crew there. You said the word execution, they did it. 
absolutely perfect. One of the few teams in the top half of that uh, of that timing screen that had no penalties at all. They had pace and they were clean. That's a good combination. That's a great combination, and I think that's what wins races. That's what wins championships. And so these guys are now in a mode to try and dig themselves out of a hole that they put in in mid Ohio. And to, this was a great day for them. Well, we'll get the full yeah. result for you in a moment's time. We have to wait for all of the teams, uh, all of the cars to go across the line. But provisionally, Jeremy, you've done a bit of arithmetic. Yeah, and uh, I, I think uh, you're right. It'll be third place, I think, in the in the pro class for the number 29 car once the penalties are applied. And that will mean, I believe, that the uh, number 50 car will close to within just a couple of points in the overall championship lead for and in the pro category. Yeah, and and the, the difficult weekend that Brian Sells was, was referring to for the number one car was they had uh, wheel problems with the uh, with all the prestige performance cars and right. they pulled out very early in the second race so got no points at all. Which is a testament to that program. They've obviously fixed that problem. Yes, uh, confirmed uh, with the results uh, now coming through to me and we'll see that reflected on our timing screen at the moment uh, top three in plural, one five zero two nine so our uh, quick bit of arithmetic uh, has uh, been confirmed by race control to the spoils and the trip to the winner's circle for the number one prestige supported Lamborghini Huracan of Hinman and Chicotto. They take overall and pro. Pro-am to Spinelli and Perez. Am to Ryan Hardwick in a creditable fifth position. And the 66 of Meredith taking home the LB Cup big trophy. Great scene down here, the podium at Watkins Glen. Jonathan Chicotto, Trent Hinman, I've seen you do this too many times now. What a great final stint, a great place to win a big race. Uh, you're not kidding, Justin. I mean, it was uh, it was nerve-wracking at the end there. I think uh, I think I overdrove the tire a bit, um, just hanging on, you know. But that was all down to Jonathan, man. He got a great start. He was aggressive. He got out to the lead, passed on the outside of the S's. I mean, come on. But big thanks to the Wayne Taylor Racing guys, Prestige Performance. They gave us a great car overnight. We made some changes. We were a little bit disappointed with the way we ran in race one, but uh, just glad to see that all the hard work paid off. And Jonathan, obviously being in a Lamborghini here, one of the most famous tracks in the world with Trent, uh, that's a pretty good way to kick off uh, North American career. Absolutely, I'm, I'm very excited to be here. I'm really happy. It's an honor to, to drive with the Wayne Taylor racing team and together with Trent, which is an excellent teammate. And yes, finally we got the win. <laughs> I had to come much earlier, but better late than, than ever. <laughs> Enjoy the moment, guys. You are winners at Watkins Glen. As far as the points positions concerned after round four, Corey Lewis and Madison Snow still lead, but by two points now from Piscopo and Taylor Proto, Kadovic and Mashimi in third position. In Pro-Am, it's JC Perez and Laura Spinelli who lead by seven. In the Am standings, Ryan Hardwick up by seven, two on Damon Oki. Brian Thenis, another couple of points further back. And in the LB Cup, Paris Mullins by 10 from Mark Proto and Sheena Monk in third position. Well, that's a wrap from Watkins Glen International for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. What incredible racing rounds three and four of this dynamic series have produced this weekend. Of course, we're seeing some incredible young driving talent make their way to the top. The fans have enjoyed it. The cars have performed. Join us again in just a few short weeks at Road America for the third race weekend of this incredible series. Justin Bell in victory lane. Jeremy Shaw and Brian Sellers are alongside me, John Hindhoff, in the IMSA broadcast booth. Thanks to our entire crew in association with IMSA. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.